Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film. Center. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In the 1980s, a film reviewer called Ms. Charming and her co-worker are examining a low-budget horror film called Video Nasties. As film reviewers, they decide whether the scenes from Video Nasties are safe for public consumption or not. Ms. Charming thinks that the scene they watched is too violent because of the eye-gouging scene, while her co-worker insists that they should appreciate the intellectual layer behind the scene. But Ms. Charming already made her decision to recommend censoring the scene, believing that it is too risky to let the public see it. Apparently, the British government banned the violent scenes from Video Nasties due to the increasing crime rate in the country, stating that Video Nasties cause it. They broadcast on the TV how various hardcore scenes of butchering, sadism, and murder may inspire violent behavior. So film reviewers like Ms. Charming examine the content of Video Nasties to censor hardcore violent scenes or reject those films that are totally violent, especially those slasher ones in Daniel C.C. Movie Channel hoping in this way they can protect society from consuming violent films and in return, eradicate violence in society. After examining the film, Ms. Charming comes to the film reviewer board to report her recommendation. During the meeting, everyone declares their recommendation and soon decides whether to accept or reject the film. Suddenly, an argument between the board arises as some of the board members including Ms. Charming firmly believe that censorship can prevent kids from being violent. Meanwhile, the others express their disappointment on the intervention of the government on film productions, thinking that censorship is not a solution to prevent violence. This is why some of the board members are not taking their job seriously since they are against it. At night, all of the board members already go home, leaving Ms. Charming alone in the office. It seems that she takes her job seriously as she finds a purpose for protecting people and doing it. After a long hour of work, Ms. Charming goes home and passes through a passageway. There she sees a red-haired woman who greatly resembles her missing sister. To her knowledge, her sister went missing during their childhood, and she is the last person who was with her sister. Thinking that the woman is her sister, she calls the woman. But to her disappointment, the woman is not her sister. She then apologizes for mistakenly disturbing her. As she goes home, she receives a voice message from her mother, who invites her for dinner. Dinner meeting comes, her parents inform her that they have already declared her sister's death through a death certificate. She gets disappointed upon seeing it, since she still hopes they can find her sister one day. But her parents tell them that they should accept that her sister is gone for peace of mind. In the certificate, it's written that her sister died during the day her sister went missing. She then insists she's with her sister during that day, and she never sees her sister die. But her parents say her memory might be inaccurate. The following day, Ms. Charming, with her co-worker, comes to examine a film called Extreme Coda. The film depicts a scene where a man forcibly uses a woman to pleasure himself on the table. The helpless woman just keeps screaming in agony, but Ms. Charming remains unmoved by the scene. Her co-worker then wonders about her lack of reaction. She explains that she just focuses on fixing the scene. Suddenly, her boss calls her and the other co-worker to his office. The boss asks them about the film they approved, called Derange, which depicts a man who eats a human face. The boss informs them about a recent murder case, where a man murdered his wife, tore her face, and proceeded to eat it. The man also shoots his two children. After that, the man forgot about his gruesome crime, and people started to call him the Amnesiac Killer. Apparently, people believe that the Amnesiac Killer watched the film Derange, and the film motivates the man to commit the crime. Ms. Charming and her co-worker are under fire, as the people blame them for the crime since they passed the film. Later, she comes home and hears the news blaming her. She also receives a call from people who are angry with her. As she gets a familiar feeling of overwhelming guilt because of the incident, she starts to recall her last moments with her sister. She also remembers her parents angrily asking her about where her sister is. Presumably, her sister is already dead, and she is partly responsible for it, because in her memory, she seems to leave her sister to her demise when they play in the woods. So the guilt for her sister's death comes back, as she feels guilty again when people blame her for the recent murder case. The following day, the producer of Extreme Coda comes to the office and notices the charm of Ms. Charming. He compliments her and jokingly says that she can be cast for one of his films. After that, he tells her that she can examine his newly produced film, directed by Frederick. So Ms. Charming comes to watch and examine the film with her co-worker. The co-worker immediately notices that the film is unusual since it shows its title, Don't Go in the Church, without a sound. The film goes on to depict two girls in the woods, where the first girl instructs the second girl to go inside a creepy cabin for the sake of a game. 
The second girl appears to be hesitant and scared, but the first girl says it will be fun, so the second girl obliges to go inside. The first girl gets an axe and follows her inside. The first girl then hits the second girl with an axe and proceeds to chop the second girl's body. After that, the first girl walks out of the cabin and turns into the beast man. For the first time, Ms. Charming starts to tremble from the horrifying scene, since it greatly resembles her memory of her last moments with her sister in the woods. In disgust, she cannot prevent herself from puking in the toilet. As she walks out, she asks her co-worker why the amnesiac killer forgets the gruesome crime he committed. In response, her co-worker, who has knowledge about psychotherapy, says that the human brain edits out some memories when it cannot handle the truth. This means that amnesiac killer forgets about his crime because he cannot handle how he murdered his own family. The co-worker's statement also reflects Ms. Charming's situation, as she seems to forget some part of her memories of her last moments with her sister because of her overwhelming guilt. After her work, she calls her mother, asking for some comfort, since her work and her memories of her sister are stressing her out. She tries to ask her mother about the film, but she immediately changes her mind. She comes to sleep looking extremely stressed. As she sleeps, her guilt manifests in her nightmares. She has some nightmares about the film, but this time she's the main character, looking for her sister in the cabin, and in her hand is the note with the director's name written on it. Out of nowhere, her mother suddenly screams, blaming her for everything. The following day, she accidentally comes across the director's name on her note. Curious about how the film resembles her memory, she wants to find the director. She comes to the archive manager, asking for information about the director. But she does not have a list of the director's film, so the archive manager says it would take a week to manually find it. Later, she comes to the movie store to find films from the same director. She wanders through the store and observes if the store owner is selling banned video nasties, since films from Frederick are usually banned. After she sees the store owner sell a banned video nasty, she asks the store owner for films from Frederick. The store owner hesitates to let her take the film, saying that she's not the type to watch violent films. She then shares her favorite video nasty, which depicts a man's stomach being ripped open with scissors and getting stapled back after his organs fall from his stomach. The store owner is convinced, so he gets the hidden film from the back of his store. As he comes back, he gives her the film, Asunder, directed by Frederick. After that, she comes home to watch the film. To her surprise, the film's main character, Alice, greatly resembles the grown-up version of her sister. She then begins to believe that it is her missing sister. So the following day, she drives to her parents' home to show the photo of Alice. She says to her parents that she has a strong feeling Alice is her long-lost sister. But her parents appear to be certain that it's not her sister, without even looking at the photo. It seems that her parents are sure her sister is already dead. She then comes home completely devastated. In her sleep, she dreams again about a familiar scene. She sees her young sister in front of the cabin, and her sister suddenly turns into Alice. Shortly after, Alice comes inside the cabin together with the Beast Man. She then prevents Alice from going inside, believing Alice is her sister, and the dream ends. The following day, she sneaks to the archive to look for the information about Frederick and sees the producer's address in it. She writes down the address and soon comes to the producer's house. The producer welcomes her. She immediately notices that the rape scene in Extreme Coda takes place at the producer's table. She asks the producer about Frederick. The producer then says Frederick wants her to see the film since he wants a woman to see it. This makes her believe that Frederick knows about her past and deliberately chooses her to watch the film. As the producer sees her interests in Frederick's film, he offers her to cast for the film's sequel, which will be shot near Frederick's house. The producer then informs her that Alice and the Beast Man is part of the film, and it will be Alice's last film, since it would be the last shell of her life. The producer's statement makes her think Frederick abducted Alice, and she will be killed in the film. She tries to ask the producer about it, but the producer has his attention on raping her on the table. So she fights back and accidentally pushes him towards his trophy, which pierces through his mouth. She then witnesses the producer gargling his own blood, as he desperately tries to gasp for breath. In the end, the producer dies, and she walks out of his house as if nothing happened. However, the incident greatly worsens her deteriorating mental condition. The following day, she comes to her work acting strangely. It appears that she's slowly losing her sense of reality. She rummages through the archives and finds Frederick's address. As she walks out of the office, her co-workers are talking about the recent update about the amnesiac killer. It turns out, the amnesiac killer never watched the film Deranged before. This means that the film Deranged was not the motivation of the gruesome crime committed by the amnesiac killer. Ms. Charming proceeds to drive towards Frederick's address in the middle of the woods. 
She comes there to cast for the sequel film, since she hopes to meet Alice, believing Alice is her sister. As she arrives there, the film makeup artist who seems to anticipate her arrival welcomes her. The makeup artist then tells her the product is all over the place and ready to start. The makeup artist makes her wear the dress and fixes her appearance. It turns out she will be cast as Alice's sister in the film's sequel. In a few moments, the staff calls her, saying that Frederick is already waiting for her. They also wonder why the producer is not there yet, as the producer never misses a gory murder scene. After that, the makeup artist brings her outside and splashes some blood on her. She tearfully asks the makeup artist what they are planning for Alice, but the makeup artist appears to be confused about her question. Shortly after, she heads to the deeper part of the woods, where she finally encounters Frederick. She then asks him where he got the idea for his film, Don't Go to the Church. In response, he vaguely says that all of his films are based on real life. He then declares that people are mistaken to think that he creates horror, since horror is already out there and within us. He also says that it is inside her, so he instructs her to release the horror in her through her darkest impulses, for the sake of her acting in the film. This makes Frederick provoke her to release it, but she keeps denying that there's any horror within her. He then attempts to leave, but she tearfully asks him about her sister. As he sees her tearful face, he immediately thinks she will greatly act for the film. The director then instructs her to enter her story, as they begin filming her. She is in front of the cabin, and takes an axe with her as she enters it. Inside, the Beast Man actor embraces her, and says he has been waiting for her for such a long time. After they embrace, she sees the Beast Man actor trying to hurt her sister, Alice. This time she completely breaks down and forgets they are just acting for the film. She begins to think that the Beast Man actor is harming her sister in reality. This makes her grab the axe to hit the Beast Man actor. The Beast Man actor then tells her it's not part of the script, but it's already too late as she angrily smashes him in the chest, making him fall to the ground. Suddenly, she hallucinates a monster talking inside the wound. She then repeatedly hits his chest in madness, while everyone around her is shocked by the gruesome scene. Frederick arrives, completely stupefied by what he just saw, while Alice runs away in fear. Upon seeing him, she also hits him with an axe, which instantly cuts his head off. Apparently, she also kills him, thinking that he's exploiting her sister. After that, she proceeds to chase the terrified Alice, while holding an axe. Alice thinks that Ms. Charming would kill her, but Ms. Charming assures Alice that she will never hurt her, because she believes that Alice is her sister. In confusion, Alice shouts at her, telling her that they are just sisters in the film, but not in reality. Ms. Charming then sobs, and repeatedly begs Alice to be her long-lost sister. Completely devastated by the truth, Ms. Charming completely loses a sense of reality and begins to hallucinate. In her hallucination, she sees Alice as her long-lost sister coming back to thank her. Alice then says that they can now go home as they finally reunite. So Ms. Charming and Alice run happily through the woods. After that, they happily drive together towards their home. Meanwhile, the radio broadcasts that video nasties have been eradicated completely, and in return, the crime rate in Britain drops to zero. This makes Ms. Charming happy, since her job's purpose is fulfilled. Soon after, Ms. Charming and Alice arrive at their home, where they have a heartwarming reunion. But this happy ending is only Ms. Charming's hallucination. In the end, Ms. Charming kidnaps Alice, while her parents are completely horrified by her actions. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.